Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega Master System games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So before I get too far in today's video, I do want to mention for this video, you're going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch already installed in your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you don't currently have it, what I'm going to be leaving is a card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to set this up. It's super easy to do. You can watch that and then come back here. If you've been following along with my previous videos and you're not on the latest version of RetroArch 1.9.4, the UI is slightly different here. Otherwise, you can feel free to continue to use the older version. Just know it'll be slightly different here. So for us to continue here, the next thing we're going to be needing is both an external drive and our games. I will mention I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games. They are really easy to find. A quick Google search will help you out. Or you can feel free to create dumps or backups of any existing games that you have. If you're like me and you've downloaded your games, they will most likely come in a .zip file. You can see I currently have Wonderboy in a .zip file right here. Thankfully with RetroArch, we can play our games directly from a .zip without any issues. However, I always like to first extract my games. It's just something I like to do. So what I'm going to be doing is extracting my game from a .zip file. It's super easy to do. All we need to do is right click, click extract all. We can select an extraction location. I'm just going to be keeping it in the same location. Click extract and then our game is going to extract. If we come into this extracted folder, we can see our game here in a .sms format. And that's exactly what we're looking for inside RetroArch. So in RetroArch, we can either play our games from a .zip or from a .sms file. Either of these will work. What we need to do from this point is transfer both of these to our external drive, bring them over to our Xbox, and we're going to be continuing from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. From this point, we're simply going to be launching RetroArch. Once RetroArch is open, we're going to be coming to our main menu right here. We're going to be coming one to the right and we're going to be clicking on the load core option. From this point, we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sega. And we're going to be looking for Sega-MS slash GG slash MD slash CD or in brackets Genesis plus GX. We're simply going to be coming here. We're going to be clicking the A button to select this. From this point, we're going to be clicking on the main menu. We're going to be clicking down one to load content. We're going to be clicking the A button. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are downloaded. So if you're locating them from an external drive like me, they're most likely going to be on your E drive. So we need to come here to E drive, click A, and then you need to simply locate to your games. Here I have my wonderboy.sms file, or as mentioned, you can also load this game from a .zip. We simply need to click this button. Again, if you have multiple cores installed that can read this file type, they will show up here. Otherwise, we simply need to click the current core here that we have selected at the top, Genesis plus GX. Simply click the A button again. Our core is going to start to load up and then our game is going to load up. Now, it might go black for a couple of seconds, but eventually your game should load up. Now, thankfully with this core and thankfully with the Xbox, you should have no issue playing SMS games on your Xbox whatsoever. They should all run really well. And a couple of games I've tested, the performance has been really good. From this point, what we're going to be doing is opening up our menu. To do this, you can press whatever combination you did before. For me, it's down and select. And here we can see all of our default RetroArch settings. Or if we scroll down here to the Options tab, we can open this up. And here we'll get some core specific options. So the first thing you can do is select your system hardware or the type of system hardware. If you open this up, you can see all the different consoles this core supports. I haven't had any issues with Auto, although if you are and you want to select a specific console, you can come in here and do this. However, Auto has been fine for me. The same I can say for System Region. Auto has also been fine for me me, although you can feel free to come in here and adjust either of these if you would like. Next thing we have is a system boot ROM. You can feel free to turn this on or off. This will need to already have a BIOS file installed on your RetroArch, so it's not actually in here by default, so you will need to do this. Next thing we have is the Master System FM and in brackets YM2413 and this basically enables the emulation of the FM sound unit. This is again set to auto but you can also come in here and turn it on and off depending on what you want to do. We then have some frame skip options and the frame skip threshold. I'd recommend leaving this off, it's not really something I'm interested in. However, you can feel free to come in here and turn this on and feel free to adjust any settings if you would like. We can also come down a little bit further to the border where we can enable a border here if you would like as well. And those are the couple of the most important settings that I found with this core. 
After this point, if you want to save this, you can come up here to manage core settings, simply click save, and then your changes will come into an effect, or you may have to restart for some of your changes to come into an effect. That can be the best method as well. But from this point, the last thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist. You can see I have an example of one on screen right now for my PlayStation 1. It basically concatenates all of your games into a section where you can really easily find them. It adds a nice little icon and cartridge here on the left. It's not going to be something I'm showing you in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to create a game playlist. It's definitely something I'd recommend recommend, especially if you're going to be playing a lot of consoles, it can help save a lot of time and make the overall RetroArch experience a little bit better. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega Master System games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.